If you have your Bibles, would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. The only two verses we're going to read tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. And my good friend, Mr. Eagle, is going to help me preach this message tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. This is the Apostle Paul talking. This ain't somebody just got saved yesterday. Paul said, I was at a place in my life my flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. He didn't say there's one thing bugging me or two things bugging me. He said, but everywhere I looked, I saw trouble. He said, without, there were fightings. And within, there were fears. Next verse. Nevertheless, God that comforted us, those that are cast down, He comforted us not by the coming of an angel, not by the coming of a cherubim or a seraphim, but He comforted us by the coming of a person whose name was Titus. I want you to put verse 5 up the rest of the time, Spunky. I want to preach a little while tonight from the subject of eagle people. Not evil people. <laughs> but eagle people. Because how many of you know that the voices you listen to determines the choices that you're going to make? How many of you, I want to see how many honest Christians I got in here tonight have heard George Jones sing that song, Living and Dying by the Choices that I've Made. Well, I found out it's hard to do the right choice if you're listening to the wrong voice. And the enemy is a master many times, and I'm going to right back and preach a little bit, and i got to lay a foundation. The enemy is a master many times of surrounding people of destiny or with wrong voices. If he can get the wrong voices speaking into your life, he can alter the choices that you make. As a pastor, as a preacher, I've seen many people that were loaded with talent and loaded with potential, but they got surrounded by the wrong voices. And those voices begin to talk them out of everything that God had on the inside of them. I've seen intelligent people get surrounded by voices that told them they were stupid and they started believing it. I've seen gifted people get around voices that told them they weren't special and they started believing it. But I have also seen people come broken into the house of God. Shattered, not by bullets and not by dynamite, but shattered by wrong voices in their life. But I have seen them come to God and I have seen God surround them with voices of faith that begin to expel the fear. I have seen God connect people to the right voices. I found out so much of where I'm going is determined by who I'm connected to. That's why I thought the Bible said, how can any two walk together except they be agreed? Which means God can deposit something great on the inside of Clifford. And God wants to send people to Clifford that are going to speak the right noise, speak faith into Clifford to make him go the right way. But just as surely as the Lord wants to send voices of faith, the enemy wants to send voices of fear. And then it becomes Clifford's job to discern what is of God and what is of the enemy. See, when God wanted to bless me, he sent a person. When the enemy wanted to wreck me, he sent a person. My job is to say, God, which one is of you and which one I, I, I thought I'd have some honest people right now. If you've ever been blessed because of a person, you ought to give God a praise right now. If you've ever been blessed by somebody God sent your way, you ought to give God some praise right now. In fact, when God chooses to bless you, it will not be in the absence of people. It will be in the presence of people. Amen. Ain't nobody ever had a check signed by Jehovah Jireh. He said, press down, shake them together, run it over, will men give you a bosom. I'm trying to let somebody know right now that in this season you're walking into, God wants to send some eagle people your way. God wants to send some people that will send you higher. God wants to send some people that are going to wake up the faith that is on the inside of you. God wants to send some people that are going to cause you to dream again. But just as surely as God has people like that in your future, the enemy would love to hook you up with the wrong voice. You've got to watch out for people that always come in agreement with your flesh. 
You know, I saw a t-shirt one time that I got ready to buy. It said, lead me not into temptation, for I can find it all by myself. Remind me of Pete. And the truth is, when you want to do wrong, it don't take much to get you that way. But if you find one or two people around just like, you know, that ain't going to hurt nothing. Go ahead and do it. The next thing you know, you start listening to them. Here's what God's going to do for you in this hour. He's going to send people that don't speak to your flesh to get you to do the wrong thing. He's going to send people that speak to your spirit that cause you to come up higher. If you believe God can do that, I need you to holler back at me. I need to feel some love in my own church tonight. There are people that if God's going to send you higher, he'll call people that'll speak to your spirit. I, I look back over my life and look back over the wrong choices I made and I remember some of the voices I was around. Some of the things I was listening to. Now I know y'all, y'all Jesus is second cousin, so y'all don't understand nothing I'm saying. But there were times in my life that what I did and the choice I made was a direct reflection of the voice I was letting on the inside of my head. Because the right voice will speak to your faith. But the wrong voice will speak to your fear. The right voice will make something come alive in you. And the wrong voice will abort the very thing that you're believing God for. You see, when you get around evil people, that's people that make you want to soar higher. If you look at this bird right now, when God talked about you in Isaiah 40, verse 31, he said, they shall bound up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Talking about they that wait upon the Lord. It fascinates me that when God was talking about you, he compared you to an eagle. The most magnificent bird on the planet. God said, that's how I want my people to be. God said, I want my people to be magnificent, anointed, walking in my glory, inspiring. The other birds look at the eagle and say, watch him go. Let me prophesy to you. God's about ready to move in your life in such a way people are going to stand back and say, watch her go. The eagle has impeccable vision. It can see things you can never see from miles away. When God anoints you, you begin to have a vision. Vision ain't got nothing to do with the mistakes you made. Vision ain't got nothing to do with where you are. Vision's got everything to do with where God is taking you. See, when you get a vision, you don't live in your past. You begin to live in your future. I just come to tell somebody I sing in your future. And you look a lot better there than you do right now. If you believe God for a better day, I need you to take about a 10 second praise break. Come on now. If you believe your marriage will get better, if you believe your children will get delivered, you got to walk by vision. The eagle is able to take a storm that's coming at that beats other birds down and makes other birds crawl under rocks. The eagle is able to take that storm, spread out its wings, and what beats all the other animals down causes the eagle to fly higher. I'm preaching about right now. See, when God is in your life, he takes the storms that the enemy sent your way and he uses it to re he send you to a higher level. He uses to take the very thing that was going to kill you to make you a better person. When I look back over my life and all the hell he's brought me through, I got to say thank you, Jesus. You took the things that were meant to bury me and you used it to build something in me. If he's ever built something out of your pain. The eagle is a magnificent bird because it don't, it's, it's not a vagabond. It knows where home is. See, the eagle finds a rock and it stays on that rock its whole life, Logan. Kind of get a vision of why God called us an eagle. Because who is the rock? Christ Jesus. So, the eagle knows where to go when he's tired. The eagle knows where to go when he's weary. The eagle knows where to go when the storms get tough. He says, I'm going back to the rock. I'm coming to talk to somebody right now. That's why David said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's why David said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous can run into it and are safe. The eagle knows where his rock is. Do you know who your rock is tonight? The eagle will go to that rock and the eagle will station itself on that rock. The eagle mates for life. The eagle, when it finds its true love, it sticks with that true love through thick 
and through them. The eagle believes in covenant. The eagle believes in commitment. The eagle is picky about what it eats. Because the eagle, hear me somebody, knows stuff that other birds and buzzards don't know. It has one of the longest lifespans of any of the creatures. Why? Because it don't just eat any old thing. See, don't just eat any old thing the world's telling you. Don't just listen to every old voice that's speaking into your life. You ain't got to receive into your spirit those words of fear and doubt and unbelief. Don't let them poison your faith. But say the eagle were to eat something that does poison. Say it were to eat something that didn't mess with it. The eagle will go back on the rock. Scientists have proven this. Spread out its wings and lay on that rock and wait for the sun to rise up. And something about the rising of the sun causing the heat to generate on that rock will cause something to generate inside of the magnificent body, this eagle, that will begin to purge and cleanse all the poison that it's taking up preaching right now. See, sometimes the world tries to poison my faith. Sometimes people try to steal my shout. But I found that if I just get in the presence of God, he has a way of taking the sting out of It can purge fear. It can purge hopelessness. It can purge all that stuff that you're feeling right now. The eagle's a magnificent bird. And y'all have always preached that an eagle wouldn't eat roadkill. I've preached that. You people that's been with me for years, y'all know, man. And Emily and it got me this eagle because I love preaching on the eagle. They got me this Sunday. I said, I'm preaching it Wednesday night. Eagles always said they will not eat roadkill. One day me and Jake was coming from back where y'all live. It was passing Midway. Grocery. Is that what it's called right there? Painting. Uh, kind of, that's right. Midway. And we looked over on the side of the road, and, on the four away. Is that Midway? Right, right Okay. And Jake sees this big old bird eating something, Chris. And he goes, Dad, that's an eagle. And I thought, silly boy. Eagles don't eat roadkill. But I saw four men at that office right across the road. They were standing out there looking at it too in awe. I pulled over. I said, well, I got some what they're looking at. And it was this beautiful creature, much bigger than this one, eating roadkill, doing something I told y'all it would never do. I thought, Tina, how hungry did that eagle have to be to eat roadkill? And what I'm trying to tell somebody is the enemy wants you to get so hungry that you begin eating things you didn't used to eat. You begin listening to voices you wouldn't have listened to a year ago. You begin meditating on things you know better. Still, let me see your children starving to death and show me what you do. You say again. You don't know what you do when you're hungry. And if the enemy can get you around the wrong people, get you hungry for love and hungry for faith and hungry for hope, you might be like this magnificent eagle and find yourself eating something you never thought you'd eat. Find yourself running with people you never thought you'd run with. Because just as surely in life as there are eagles, and I believe I pastor eagle people. Just as surely in life as there's eagles, there's also prairie chickens. Spunky's going to throw up a picture of a prairie chicken. Because God wants to send people like this into your life. <laughs> but the enemy wants to put some of these jokers in your life. Some of you right now, you're just getting flash drives in your head of some people that they are more like the prairie chicken than they are the eagle. Ask yourself right now, are you surrounded with people of this nature, are you surrounded with prairie chicken people? See, a prairie chicken keeps its head down. A prairie chicken's always looking for dirt. A prairie chicken rarely ever looks up because it's always looking down. You've got to watch out for people that's always want to talk about the dirt. You've got to watch out for people that's always looking down and never looking to God for anything. You've got to watch out for people that won't even fly. That, that prairie chicken can't even fly right. Yeah, I'm sick of people telling us how to fly when they ain't never spread their wings. Tell me, somebody. They can't, they can't tell you how to get there if they ain't never done it. Everybody's an expert. 
experts and they get thrown in the fire. Prayer chicken people got an opinion about everything but an experience with nothing. Amen. One time there was this Indian boy and he, he uh, found this baby eagle. It had fallen out of the nest and he got the baby eagle and he took it home and he had prayer chickens on his farm. And he raised this baby eagle with the prayer chickens. So that magnificent eagle, this creature, grew up surrounded by this creature. A lot like some of y'all. God put you on planet Earth with this in mind. But you got surrounded by a bunch of these jokers. And people would come from miles around because this eagle, the prairie chicken would pluck, the eagle would pluck. The prairie chicken would flop around, the eagle would flop around. The eagle only did what its environment told it it could do. And people would come from miles around just to watch the eagle that looked like the prairie chicken. The enemy loves to get born again believers surrounded by prairie chickens to where we act just as depressed and miserable and hopeless as they are. But one day the eagle was just plucking and clucking, plucking and clucking with all the prairie chickens and all of a sudden a big shadow came across the sky. A swoosh, Neil, just whoosh, swoosh. That eagle looked up and said, what is that? Prairie chicken looked over at his buddy, the eagle, and said, that's an eagle. And you can forget about it. You can't never do nothing like that. And the eagle went back to plucking and back to acting like a prairie chicken. I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. Because some of you, your biggest problem is God put you on the earth with this in mind, but you got surrounded at an early age with prairie chickens that have told you you'll always be depressed, always be addicted, always be labeled by your past. I've come to tell somebody the devil is a liar. God didn't send you to this planet to be a prairie chicken. He sent you to be an eagle. He didn't send you to pluck around in the dirt. He sent you to soar in the heavens. Somebody told me there could never be a city on the hill. Prayer chicken people that made fun of me when I preached my first few sermons. Some of them still do. Prayer chicken people made fun of the way I pronounced my words. Prayer chicken people that said I was an idiot if I ever thought I could preach. And then I was an idiot if I ever thought I could pastor. And then I was going to be an idiot if I thought I could buy the golf course uh, driving range. And then we we're going to be idiots, idiots. I've always had them people in my life. There'll never be a world where the prayer chicken don't exist. But there could be a you that ignores what the prayer chicken said. It's not the voices that are speaking to you, it's the ones you listen to. And I found sometimes it's just as important what you ignore as what you listen to. Because in a broken stage in my life, because I've been surrounded by prairie chickens, a broken Mary Absher gave his heart to Jesus. Me and Carlene got set on fire for God, and God put an eagle in my life by the name of Ronnie Ward. And when he looked at me, he didn't look at me through all the stuff I had done. He saw me through eagle eyes and said, I see a man of God in you. I see somebody that can do something for Jesus. And I began to listen to what the eagle said, and it began to cancel out what the prayer chicken said and I'm just praying God make me an eagle in somebody's life tonight that breaks the chains of yes this won't be an eagle to you if it, I look and if it hadn't been for the eagles in my life where would I be if all I'd ever heard me was some crazy prayer chickens where would I be yes God's blessed me it's all been God but he sent people Carlene and her mama have both been eagles in my life. My mama and my mama have both been eagles in my life. I look at where I am today, and yes, it's all been Jesus. But Jesus has used some mighty fine people to get me where I am. And if you got some people you want to thank God for, I recommend you do it about right now. See, God wants to connect you to some eagle people. Not people that bring up your yesterday, but people that cause you to see your tomorrow. Not people that beat you down, but people that begin to build you up. Not people that come in agreement with your flesh, but people that stir your spirit. There were times I tried to get Ronnie to come in agreement with my flesh. He wouldn't. He just kept seeing my spirit. He kept seeing the man of God. 
He saw when I didn't see, see eagle people. Well, see, this guy will see stuff in you when nobody else does. But some of you are depressed and downtrodden right now because one of these jokers got a hold of you at a young age and told you you were nothing. Amen. One of these jokers got a hold of you at a young age and got you going down a train of thought that God never intended you to go down. And you say, oh, it'd be good to be like that, preacher. But if you could see me on the inside, do you have a prayer chicken spirit or do you have an eagle spirit? I know what it's like to come to church and you want to act like the eagle, but on the inside you feel like the prayer chicken. That's why 2 Corinthians 7 verse 5 blessed me because my eagle, Apostle Paul, got real. And I found out the days of faking people out are over. People want real. People are tired of coming to church to be faked out where the preacher acts like he's better than everybody else. He puts his preachers on just like you do. He gets mad in traffic just like you do. He has bad days just like you do. And that's the way we can preach him to you because we need him just as bad as everybody from the pulpit to the pew. All of me and all of you. We all need Jesus in here today. Every single one of us. And Paul said, I'm going to be real with you. Paul said, I ain't going to spend my time thinking you out, Chris, in this place. He said, I'm going to be real with you. He said, we come to Macedonia and our flesh was troubled and wore out. I'm preaching to some people that life has wore you out. Man, I'm telling you, when you're going through trouble, my flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. I said, God, put a word in my mouth. And I believe I'm preaching to some people say, if you be honest, you feel like Apostle Paul and you say, you know what, preacher? I feel like I got troubles everywhere. Amen. I got legal battles. I got family battles. I got stress with my friends. I got drama in my situation. Everything around me, my money is acting funny. If it was one thing, I could focus, preacher, but it ain't one thing. I got 99 problems in here tonight. I need some real people. You ever had that Apostle Paul thing on you and said, Lord, have mercy. I'm fighting to get to the fight. It seems like my whole life is a fight. He said, we were troubled on every side. This is the part that got me. Because I know what it's like when you feel like you're fighting in your marriage. Not, not our marriage, but I've read books about it. <laughs> fighting with your kids. Fighting with your job. It's one thing to be fighting out here, all the stuff people can see, but Paul said it goes deeper than that. He said, not only were we fighting on the outside, he said, while we're fighting the battle on the outside, we're dealing with fear. On the inside. Yes. Have you ever been fighting a battle out there? Jack, 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 Jack. You've been fighting that battle. People see the fight you're in. But they don't know the real battle. They got nothing to do with the enemy they see. Because with all that stuff you got on the inside, you're thinking the outside's easy compared to what I'm going through in my head and in my heart. I, I can win this outside battle that you think's so tough. I had somebody come up to me one time that saw the outside battle I was fighting and said, Brother, I'm just praying for you. I know it's got to be tough. And I thought, yeah, it is, but you have no idea my real battle ain't out there. If you saw what I was going through in here, you'd really pray for me. I got any real believers in here that say, yeah, I might have some stuff out there, but if you knew what was going on in my head, if you knew my internal struggle, you ought to get a hold of God for somebody tonight, because somebody's got some stuff going on on the inside. Because the devil is a master of getting you in a fight. You're fighting that outside battle. You're fighting it. But that fear's eating you up, saying you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to win. And you're fighting for that marriage. But that inward fear is saying you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to win. You're fighting for that son. You're fighting. Tina was fighting for Caleb. But fear on the inside said, is your baby going to make it? Have you ever had the fight on the outside and the fear on the inside? Amen. See, if you fight outward, but you got peace on the inside, you're good. The boat in the storm is okay. But when the storm gets in the boat, it begins to sink. What do you do when the fear on the inside is greater than the fight on the outside? What do you do when the stuff you see me fighting is nothing in comparison to the real battle going on between my ears? And you're thinking, oh... Yeah, you see my struggle, but the one you see ain't the one that's getting me. And Paul said, I had battles I was fighting without. He said, but to be real honest with you, I had some fears that were overtaking me on the inside. 
He said, but the God of all hope, who lifts up those that are cast down, he said, he sent him to me a man named Titus. I want you to think about the life of Paul right now, because before he was the great apostle Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus, persecuting the church. God met him on the road, struck him blind, and turned his world around. But nobody would tell him nothing, and God had to send a man. Everybody say a man. A man by the name of Ananias who prayed for him. And the Bible said the scales fell off. So the great apostle Paul had to come in contact with an eagle who knew how to get him to see things different. Have you ever been around people that when you felt hopeless, they knew how to make you see things different? So Paul had to have somebody that made him see it's going to be okay and it's going to be all right few chapters later you find Paul in trouble again because he's got all this revelation but nobody will let him preach because if I was going to let somebody preach in here who 10 years ago killed your grandparents for believing in Jesus y'all quit my church y'all quit my church over a lot less than that and so now Paul's got all this revelation and won't nobody give him a chance and so God sends another eagle his way by the name of Barnabas, which means the son of reconciliation. See, God will send somebody to believe in you when nobody else believes in you. And Barnabas went around to all the churches saying, listen, I know who he used to be, but God has called him to be something else. you got to let this man preach. And Barnabas opened the door for him. I thank God for the great McLaughlin who let me preach one of my first sermons and Bishop Jack Keene and all the preachers that opened doors for me when nobody God uses to open the doors you need to open, whether it be in your business, in your relationship. So it had an Ananias, it had a Barnabas, but in this chapter, now he says, I'm fighting on the outside, I got fear on the inside. He said, I was about to lose hope. Some people get nervous when you let the Bible say what it really means. The man that wrote two thirds of the new covenant said, I was about to lose all hope. If Paul could feel like that, then you're okay, baby. The God that brought him through is going to bring you through too. Because Paul said right before we gave up, God sent us a Titus. And Titus gave us the strength to stay in the fight. You know what the name Titus means? It means you can make it. And every now and then in life, you just need to have somebody that loves you and believes in you and says, brother, you're going to make it. You're going So Glenn, for every prayer chicken to try to talk you out of it, you drop that voice tonight, baby. God has big thanks for you. I want everybody as Pastor Joe begins to play, I want you to lift your hands. The Jim, the Leonas, the Sandys, Cameron, the Shirley. I pastor eagles. I don't pastor prayer chickens. You say, well, I feel like a prayer chicken. I do too sometimes. But you ain't no prayer chicken. And God ordains church to remind you you're not what the prayer chicken said. You're not what the past said. You're not what flesh people say because they can only go by what they know about you, what they heard about you. People of the Spirit say your past is under the blood. 
People of the Spirit say God is for you, not against you. People of the Spirit say there's nothing in your past that can destroy your future. I'm so glad Brother Bob came tonight. <laughs> if you're in here tonight, Apostle Paul, the greatest preacher of the gospel, had to help people. And you think it's weird when you need help? When you just need somebody to love on you? Nah. It'd be weird if you did. I need my wife. I wear her out. I need my friends. I need Kelly. I need Mikey. I need Kathy. The enemy loves to try to make you walk through this thing alone. But God said it is not good for man to be alone. How many of you feel alone tonight? The Spirit of God is awakening the eagle on the inside of you. The Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is detaching you and untangling you from all the voices of the prayer chicken. From all those people that try to dig up your past and make you feel bad. God said, no, 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 no. no. Don't let their voice guide you. Let the voice of the eagle guide you. Don't make a choice based on fear. I just felt that right there in my spirit. Don't make a choice based on fear because that comes from the prayer chicken. Make your choice based on faith. Make your choice based on faith. I ain't talking no prayer chicken stuff. I'm talking eagle people. I had people in my darkest times that come to me and said, you're going to make it. I had people that came to me and they began to speak to me when I didn't see no way out. They said, a better day's on the way. You know what? They were right. The warfare was which voice am I going to listen to? Some of you have had those voices trying to talk you out of. Maybe they were internal voices, but they were voices nonetheless. But God also ordained voices of the Spirit to get you to keep looking at Him, keep lifting your hands. And the voice you listen to determines the outcome you experience. Anyway, I want to thank you for just giving me that. Thank you. If you're in here tonight, that will stay on my desk forever. And there's going to be days your pastor's going to be sitting behind that desk because I don't know if y'all know this, but people drive me crazy. And I'm going to look at that eagle and it's going to remind me I might have some prayer chicken days, but I know who I am. Yeah. I'm going to have some prayer chicken people I got to deal with, but I'm going to know it's all about the eagle. For they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. I preach to eagles tonight and I declare you will not die in this valley. I declare your hope will not but strength is coming to you even now in the name of Jesus. If you're in here and you need a touch from God, I want you to step out of your seat and come to this altar right now. I need some eagle people. Don't listen to the voice of the prairie chicken that says, well, I'll just stay here. No, be the eagle. Be the one that says, I'm going back to the rock. I need God to help me out of this. I need God to move for me. If that's you, I need you to step out right now. Be the eagle right now. Don't be the prairie chicken.